our history is 5000 years uh, before we had rama and mahabharat rama killed ravana krishna killed kans arjun killed his own relatives because they were no good 200 b- years b- ago india was the largest economy in the world lot many people invaded the country why hindu was not defending them at that time and why gandhi was appreciated because of his non violence and truth he was also hindu prithviraj chauhan he excused mohammad ghazni for 16 times and ghazni killed prithviraj chauhan 17 times when ghazni uh, conquered prithviraj chauhan and why hindus are considered to be coward these days we claim to be such an ancient civilization far advanced than others other part of the world for thousands of years that's what he said it's such an advanced civilization how come few hundred years back we have invaded not once but invaded twice how come we couldn't stand up why were we so cowardly this is the question what went wrong you see the answer is this it's a very important question i won't mention the names he has mentioned because it will become a political talk then the answer is this whenever things go wrong like this and you are in the medical field so you know if he, the body of a patient of an individual is weak is his immunity is down every little bacteria can come and invade your body and demolish you now i'm not saying the foreigners are bacteria that would be too much but when your system your body itself is weak for whatever reasons your immunity is down and even a minor force can come and demolish you that's what happens in medical field that's why your immunity must be protected otherwise you can be demolished by the one bacteria will grow in your lungs and demolish you so this is what i have to think about you see it's always easy to blame outsiders for something that went wrong we must look within our senses of what went wrong here that a handful of people could walk in and almost demolish a whole nation destroy all the temples and everything the religion demolished thousand years we were slaves what went wrong this is what you must think and the answer is this the very thing that built us up you see every time you discover a tool it can be used or it can be misused so we have discovered this marvelous tool this is a discovery not an invention of spirituality the underpinning to us is spirit the underpinning to the whole creation is spirit we discovered that atman and brahman and this marvelous idea of relating through various gods and goddesses this broad ideas of hinduism we recognize we use them the 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 society was charged up very cohesive very powerful i'm talking of the golden period of india just in the buddhistic time at the time of buddha it was the golden period no way anybody could come and conquer the but the same thing that was helping us become so vibrant when it is misused the same tools that you can have to do for the benefit of society when they become degenerate they can do tremendous harm i'll give you two examples you'll see why these are important things for the hindus to learn about you see we learned this thing called the law of karma now the law of karma simply says as individuals we set things into motion and the, we have to bear the consequences of things that we have set into motion that's the basic idea it sounds very clever very rational saying that we are in charge of our destiny and we will in a way fashion our our own future this is what it tells you it empowers you to dictate your own future saying i am in charge of my destiny what a lovely idea law of cause and effect on personal term this is central in all the indic religions hinduism buddhism jainism sikhism what a powerful thought it empowers us to fashion our own future what a good thought i just show you what how a good idea can turn nasty in no time now this is this we are not still turn it around eh it's still visible in modern india today so we are not still learned our lesson if you go to india today look there is no foreigners no foreigners ruling us for 60 years go to india today and of course you know you are invited by some rich family friends in mumbai and you go there and there's a wedding and you take participate in kurtas and all this dancing and feasting and going on things are going well and then you step out of the door of your relation and there's a little girl 3 year old girl standing in tatters hungry destitute looking at the festivities starving and you tell your 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 host come 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 what about her do you know what is going to tell you law of karma our karma we did in our previous life such good things we go inside and have party 
and this girl must have done some horrible thing, let her stand there and starve, let her pay her price, we have our rewards inside, he will just look away, look. The very idea that it was ever, uh, uh, going to empower you has turned so nasty and so negative, we have still not learnt our lesson. The law of karma says the following, it says not only what you set into motion is going to come and catch up with you, but what you fail to do, if you see a problem in front of your eyes and you fail to address the problem, you turn your back, it's going to come and bite you even more. This is the law of karma, the, sec the mature idea of law of karma. Not only what you do, but what you fail to do is going to come and whack you. And we have forgotten the second part of the equation. So even in modern India today, they say, oh, we are a major economic power. We are kind of, you know, running away, you know, with one of the world major powers. What world power? If 30 or 40 percent of your population cannot get clean drink of water, and you don't give a damn, I say you are not a civilized nation at all, you are not spiritual at all, you have not learnt your lesson. You need to, if you see an a problem in front of you, address it. Do you know where this thing is addressed in full, full rigor? Where you find practicing Hindus, I am telling you, not in India, here. Here a refugee walks in, doesn't have anything, no money, nothing. In two ticks, this, this people here, we lift him up, give a safety net, education, food, health, wealth, and edu you know, everything will be given to that person, like that. He said, why do you do this? A different, different racial person, he's from Somalia, why do you bother? He said, no, no, Mr. Lakani, no human being can starve here, even though they will misuse the system. We can't let him fall down, we can't allow his dignity to be compromised, human dignity to be compromised. I do you know what I tell these people? I say, you are practicing Hindus. The Hindus in India are theoretical Hindus, poor practitioners. The reason why I am making, making this comment is this. You see, unless we improve ourselves and recognize that we possess powerful tools, we don't know how to use them. We are very poor practitioner. We cannot come out of this, if you like, this malaise, this problem. There is a second area, you will see this also. There was an idea in ancient Vedic scripture, the Shruti scripture, we said, in society, the way we become religious is to use our own skills to the full for the betterment of the greater society. What a very lovely idea. Division of labor based on your ability. This is the idea in the Rig Veda. Clean cut. Every modern society does it. They will say, oh, do you like medicine? Do you like oh, art? Do you like music? Okay, you go there, we will specialize you in that. You start streaming youngsters based on their ability to become best professional in that field and contribute towards the greater society. You are good for brain surgery, become a brain surgeon. You are good for becoming a bricklayer, become a good bricklayer. There is a marvelous division of labor based on your ability. This is the idea of Hindus, the pure ideas of ancient Hindus. What did it turn into in no time? This monstrous, horrendous, hereditary, hierarchical caste system. By mere birth, you are just down there. I thump you. Look, if you go to India today, the way they treat their servants will make you feel ashamed. They will make you feel ashamed. You will shudder. If you have been born and brought up in this, you will, you will shudder. The same food we are eating, the leftovers, the servant girl, not sitting on the table, will sit in the corner on the floor somewhere and, and, and eat it. And you are watching it and say, what have I done? What have I done? I am saying, there is God here, in shining in the eyes of this girl. What am I doing to her? Where is the dignity? So I am saying, the problem is not from outside, the problem is within. When your structure, something is wrong in your body, things will come and attack you. And this is the prize and we are still, I am telling you, the only place where we will learn our lesson is from United Kingdom. I am telling the Indians through this channel, that learn to be good Hindus from the Englishman here. He has put into practice what you have been preaching, becoming good human beings, being really humane. That is what Ram is about. These people are doing it, you have forgotten it. You just want kurtas and dance about. And the poor, they can starve. You see, look, do you know when I read stuff like this, I shudder and I feel I don't want to go to India. The poor women in India, suppose they are working in Mumbai. The only way they can answer the call of nature is to get up before the sun rises and go to the sea. There is no place for them, otherwise their dignity is compromised. These are my mothers. What are we doing to them? We don't give them any dignity. And we call ourselves spiritual, religious. What spiritual? What religious? We have a lot to learn about dignifying humanity. And whenever we learn, whenever we see other nation that is practicing this in, 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 full, you know, in full, full flow, we have to bow down and say, we learn from you. The modern India is going to wake up, become awakened to this broader idea of Hinduism from United Kingdom.
It is here this broad idea of Hinduism will come implanted. From here they will be resent to India and wake them up. When the Englishman says good stuff here, Hindus say, we knew it, we knew it. We are still slaves mentally. Unless the Westerner gives a tick, he won't accept. This is a sad state of affairs.